so we've talked about wants but how do you actually sell to wants how do you actually sell to wants uh, turns out there are a few techniques that we can use and i'll share these techniques through a couple of stories so let me tell you a story just a second uh one second everybody can see the screen properly right everybody yes. can see the screen yes yes, yes it was so let me tell you a story once a wealthy gentleman a very wealthy now now listen to the story carefully every point is important because at the end of the story i'll ask you a couple of questions so once a very wealthy looking gentleman okay i'm not talking about a gentleman who is wealthy but doesn't look wealthy he is wealthy and he looks wealthy also he is dressed dressed extreme with very expensive you know all the fashionable clothes uh, he just looking from the outside he looks extremely wealthy he walks into a luxury car room store and when we when we we talking about luxury we not even talking about you know we not even talking about mercedes and bmw we talking about something even more like bentley rolls royce we talking of that level kind of luxury uh, car uh, showroom so he walks in there when he walks in there he walks up to this uh, shiny looking bentley bentley car and a sales person basically approaches him okay and the sales person approaches him and he says the sales person says to the wealthy looking gentleman uh, sir how can i help you so the wealthy looking gentleman who obviously looks you know very well dressed very uh, clearly looks very rich that gentleman says i want to buy this car now tell me how should the sales person have responded i i i'll continue the story i'll continue the story but yeah 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 tell me <laughs> the sales person would have thought of incentives till now <laughs> yeah that, that's fine but but if if somebody says that you know a wealthy looking person uh, quite rich visibly rich he comes and says that okay I, i want to buy this car then then what should the sales person do what should the sales person say to the prospect in this in this particular case uh we should ask like uh, should what is more it. interested more interested um, uh, futures uh, in the car that he wants to buy we will welcome him to uh, 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 somebody was somebody you said about features can you elaborate again yeah like uh, uh, what are the features that are uh, uh, like the salesman should ask the gentleman whether he would like to know the features or he already knows and shall they process for the paperwork given option to uh, you know tell him of the features so he will take him to will, sitting lounge and will have some good discussion so he will welcome him to sit in some lounge and then he can discuss on the features and other things okay, okay. anyone else uh, sir i would try to understand his mentality that how much he is willing to spend if that if he is willing to spend more than what that core cost so definitely i would have recommended some other car which is much more costlier than that this one which he is looking for okay okay anyone else want to add anything i just want people to think i want you to think beyond the uh, uh, the uh, you know the way most sales people are trained just to give like uh, you know Train dances. I want you to just think beyond that, and I want to think about what should like be the why common sense answer. Why he wants why was, to buy the car is the first thing. Like what? Uh, what are the features that um, made him in, uh, that are interested for him to buy this car? Uh, if he is uh, already interested in this car, then being a salesperson, uh, if I was there, then I will be asking to that person that he. Uh, I'll be interested to knowing about his uh, his personal details. what he does from where he came and uh, what is his capability i would like to know that then only i can discuss for the further discussion i just want to again uh, clarify one thing the gentleman he himself looks extremely rich uh, i just want to add one more option to make your maybe, to make your, yeah, let, let every, me just, every, yeah. gentle, every, every average yeah maybe yeah. maybe i think that uh, if uh, he's very rich rather explaining the speeches and all i would be saying that uh, this particular if car is a limited edition 
and this is only for super rich uh, people. Maybe I can give some example of very rich or very uh, kind of uh, maybe president level, some kind of people. And only to those people I'll be selling this particular car. Maybe that would be my first statement. Mm -hmm. Here, uh, here the point is uh, the client is already. Uh, I want to add one more thing to make things a little car. easier for people to make it. Can I can I just complete? I'll just I'll uh, let me just add one more detail to the story so that it becomes a little easier for you uh, for you all to make a decision on what to do. So, uh, not only is the person extremely well dressed, but a similar looking car is he comes from a similar looking car also. His, a similar looking car, similar category car is also parked outside the showroom. That is what he travelled in. Now, now everything is very okay. clear as to how wealthy he is. Now I just want you to uh, think a little bit as to how, what kind of, uh, you know. First is, uh, first and foremost important thing is I wanted to make him connect. So to make him connect, I wish to speak about his old and previous experiences which he have. Because I'm not selling XYZ car, I'm selling Bentley. So the customer who is walking down the showroom, I have to understand he's serious about my product. He's not coming for a window shopping. So this is one. Second is, I'll start my discussion from his previous experience. And sec uh, lastly, I'll ask, you are taking this car for some purpose. So are you taking it for yourself or you are taking for your daughter? So if he, you know, choose any one of uh, these things, then the vision should be, I will put in his mind that car is already bought. And if you buy this particular car, then what all things you will be having when you sit into this and what kind of experiences you will be having, having Bentley in, uh, uh, along with you. So currently your car is giving you these benefits and this particular car is giving you that many benefits. So that should be my approach. I want to add one point. Okay. I, so, I just want to clarify one more thing. I think people are missing a few. That's why I'm saying listen to every point that I'm saying. I, uh, I look very rich. Yeah, let, let me just complete and then you can add. Person looks very rich. Person is looking, has come into the showroom while and he's uh, stepped out. I mean, he has driven to the showroom or driven by a chauffeur into the showroom in a similar category car. Okay, number two. And number three, he says, I when he comes here, he doesn't ask for anything. He says, I want to buy the car. Now, I understand all these three points that I have said. Now, I just want you to again think. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah. Uh... Here, uh, he already made his mind to buy the car. So no need to explain the features again, but uh, better to take him to the paperwork. Later, we should ask him uh, or uh, uh, inquire him about the mode of payment he was doing, like it, uh, like it is through the check or he want to take the EMI or whatever. After, after verifying his profile, then we can have a discussion about it. Uh, okay. I just want to add point that like uh, if uh, I will just say that that's great choice, sir. The car is waiting for you. Okay, great. Others, anyone? Uh, if he is looking for some upgraded features, so uh, we can discuss. We can ask him that uh, any upgraded feature that you are looking for in the new version of car. Maybe the looks and uh, color of the car, what he is coming from, uh, will be same, but there could be some new upgraded feature in the version that is placed in the show. So we can ask for the new upgraded features if he's looking for. Yeah, others want to add? Uh, others who have not spoken yet, do you want to add something? Just add something. Others who have not spoken yet. I would say uh, he doesn't need a car. He already has his needs fulfilled. He wants to buy this car, right? So he has already started about this, that he wants this particular feature and this is. So the sale, one, the client's mindset is already prepared. He's already ready to buy that. It's just that we should appreciate that what he's decision he has taken, it's a good decision, it's a right decision. And we should also tell him how to go ahead with the sale. Once he's prepared to buy this, we should, I would say, just take him on a, just ask him to get a test drive done. That's what the salesperson should do. Okay, you spoke a lot, all, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, as others also. You also have spoken a lot of very good points, but there's something that you added in the end that went off track. Anyway, I just want you to, uh, I just want others to add. So, others, do you want to add something to this? 
Anyone else want to add? Yeah. So at one point here, like apart from other points, we could also ask him if he needs some kind of customizations in the car. If he has decided to go ahead with this car itself, mm -hmm. he wants some kind of customizations in the car because it's a premium range car. So we could offer some customizations also. Okay. Okay. So uh, should okay, I, I would like to yeah. add on one thing. Uh, okay. So as you said, the person is looking extremely rich. He was driven by a shopper and. You already have a, a very high class car, so mm -hmm. probably I would say one thing that uh, meanwhile that the paperwork is getting ready, would you like to have a look on one of the most exclusive car, which is uh, just by the side of this car, and then probably it would be an opportunity for me to sell an upgraded version or a, a more expensive car to him. So this would be, uh, I think this is what I would do. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sir, uh, Prashop here. Hmm. Same thing, sir. If he's already having a kind of uh, same category car, then we should understand why he wants, I mean, one more in the same category. And if his requirement is something higher, then we can suggest him any upgraded version. So that we okay. can ask. Okay. 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 Fine. So let me, let me, uh, again, uh, continue the story and before we continue the story i think all of you have given some good answers uh, but some have fallen into into the typical salesperson trap which is basically the fact that when a very well very very uh, uh, very rich looking person uh, who's obviously driven in an expensive car he comes and he says that i want to buy i want to purchase this car at that time, you don't want to add any friction. At that time, you don't want to add any friction uh, by asking questions that would somehow deviate from the sales process. Now, a few points were absolutely correct. So I'll cover those. So anyway, let's go back to the story. So the salesperson, he becomes nervous when he sees this rich guy walk in and you know all these things and he says that i want to buy this car so the salesperson is a typically trailed salesperson he becomes nervous he doesn't know what to say and he says sir uh, uh, would you like a test drive so the 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 uh, the wealthy looking gentleman he says look i mean i already have this category of these cat uh, this kind of a car i don't need a test drive i just want to buy the car now what should the salesperson should uh, should do what do you think he should do What do you think the salesperson should do? He says, the salesperson offers, would you like to go for a test drive? He says, no, I, I just want to buy the car. So what should the salesperson do now? Here are two things he can do. One is uh, he can uh, take him to paperwork and uh, get, sell that car. Or he can uh, suggest him more expensive car because he already own a Bentley. He can suggest him a Rolls Royce uh, and uh, he, he can explain the features and uh, he can suggest him how Rolls Royce is better than the car he is looking for. And he can change his mind and he can sell much <clears throat> more efficient car. See, all these cars which are branded, you know, like Rolls Royce and all these high end cars, you know, they are not ready to buy kind of. They are ordered first, you know, and then they are made and delivered to the client. Okay, so the, this is the delay which basically creates the importance of these cars, the brands. Okay, the salesman may take it and then say, okay, sorry, you have to wait and you have to finalize, look into your profile and all that. And it then depends on the brand of the car, actually. Uh, some cars, yes, some brands are very highly customized. I mean, like Lamborghini, it is not customized that much. I mean, you can just buy it off the showroom. But anyway, yes, yes. Let's let's assume you can easily, let, let us assume for simplicity's sake that he can purchase the car. What should the salesperson do? Anyway, I'll, I'll just continue with the story. So, so, so the, uh, the, the guy says that I want to buy the car. Salesperson first says that, uh, would you like to go for a test drive? He says, no, I don't want a test drive. I just want to buy the car. Salesperson becomes even more nervous. He's been trained in a certain way. So he says, sir, uh, would you like me to show, show, uh, show when you want to buy the car? Sure. Uh, would you like me to just explain some features of the car? Uh, do you want me to explain some features? So now. The wealthy gentleman, he starts getting irritated. He says, I already know the features. I'm just saying I want to buy the car. Okay. So now what should, what should the salesperson do? Open the pricing sale and close it. Open the sale and close it. But the salesperson is even 
you know uh, the he has been trained in a very typical way and he gets even more nervous and he says he basically says that sir show sure, sure i know you really like the car i just want to show you another car uh, that has a deal going on and you can get the the, the uh, a similar car at a discount why to confuse a person who is ready to buy something and which is very expensive that is a typical so he should stay away he should stay away go for the closer yeah but that is a typical sales person uh, attitude because the way typically sales people are asked uh, especially in car start showing him something else maybe he'll delay his decision he'll say okay fine i like this also but i won't decide today now let me come back that is if he's actually uh, see what you're saying is right but that is actually if he is actually just thinking of buying a car but he's not thinking he's ready to buy a car <laughs> he's well, ready to the sale Ha. but what happens is the sales person has been trained in a very typical fashion uh, you know just to follow through with the script iske baad ye after this you say this after this this is he is not using any common sense first he says test drive person says no then he says features person gets irritated and says no then he finally gets even a little more nervous and he says sir there's another car and you can get a great deal on it you can get it on a discount now the when the gentleman gets extremely irritated he says who the hell taught sales to this person i am walking out i am not going to buy a car from this guy so he starts to walk out of the showroom and the moment he starts to walk out another sales person who has actually been observing this uh, particular interaction he just comes to him kind of a senior sales person he just comes to him and he says uh, sir uh, what is the issue here so uh, he says that you know you have the sales person who's a completed yet i just want to buy the car and he is asking me all these stupid questions so the second sales person the other we talking about the second sales person just a second what he says is so no problem no problem uh, just sit and we'll immediately get the paperwork done and again the first sales person tries to come back to the uh, the uh, belgian gentleman the gentleman says i am not going to buy the car from you so the first gentle first sales person blows a guaranteed commission check he completely because of his nervousness because of his uh, non common sense kind of a thinking he loses the guaranteed commission check the wealthy gentleman starts talking to the second sales person so the second sales person gets him seated starts the paperwork and just before just before they are about to you know basically do the signing the second sales person asks sir why do you want to buy this car so he says sir i already i i i uh, like bentleys and you know what uh, i have worked very hard so i just want to show to my friends uh, the the results of my achievements so that's why i like cars like this so the second sales person says in that case we have a limited edition version of this car upstairs and that is the only version of this car in the city so the wealthy gentleman hears that and he says that is the one i want that is the one i want so my question is and he basically purchases the limited edition which is a higher more expensive car and it basically uh, uh, wealthy gentleman uh, buys a car from the second sales person and the second sales person gets a high price commission check the first sales person gets nothing now my question to you is the second sales person closed the deal up sold and got the big commission check why do you think the first sales person completely lost an almost certain deal and the second sales person got it why do you think bottom line difference is uh, where in the first person panicked hmm. and what else first person and the, and the want of the customer he wanted to know the main reason why he wanted to buy the car what is the reason for it to buy sir i believe it is because of the mental barrier of sales cycle he thought that this is the process which we have to follow and he was not ready to skip some step in it till he was not sure that he will buy the car or not because already he was having one car so that uh, first sales person was not very much sure that whether he is going to buy the car or not So that, I just want to add that. something to this. I just want to add something something to this. Do you think somebody who has no car is more likely to buy an expensive car, or do you think somebody who already has an expensive car is more likely to buy an expensive car? See, whatever you have today, your next car is going to be expensive than that. So Usually. this is how the cycle works. 
I think what the second salesman did is he understood the want, but in a very gentle way, rather throwing it as a question by, while he was doing the paperwork, he got involved in the discussion. And through that, he understood the want and he had something to offer. So he offered. Right. In both the cases, the uh, way of probing was completely different. So in the first case, uh, the probing was, uh, you know, premature and that completely uh, took chances of the particular deal. However, in the second case, while doing the paperwork, the probing was very clever and that made him ups upsell the uh, better car. To add anything? Okay. The first answer to this is the reason is that the first salesperson talked too much and did not listen to the customer's wants. Be very clear on this. The first salesperson, he talked way too much and he did not listen to the customer's wants. See, there are many reasons why this happened, but the most basic reason is this. The first salesperson talked too much and did not listen to what the customer actually wanted. The customer says, I'm ready. See, again, see, there's no point of qualifying here. Qualification you do when you, when you are not sure if the customer can buy the product. But if they are already looking rich, if they have already come in an expensive looking car, chances are they have the ability to buy the second car. Do you agree? Correct. If yes. they are ready to buy the car, then that means, and they are not, they are not, uh, and he says, I want to buy the car. He's, he's not, he does not say, he does not give the impression that I am looking around. You know, sometimes customers come in to the showroom and the salesperson approaches them. The customer says, I'm looking around. That's a different kind of approach. But he says, I want to buy the car. So when he says, I want to buy the car, then why do you need to complicate the process? Why do you need to add friction to the process? Just because you have been trained that way that this is how sales take place. No, there's something called common sense also. And common sense means you have to listen to the customer's wants. Customer clearly appears to be somebody who is rich, comes in an expensive car, ready to buy. What should you do? Ideally, you should start the paperwork. As a few people said correctly, you should start the paperwork. But most people, they get trapped into that mindset. First reason is customer salesperson talk too much and did not listen to the customer's wants. So first step that you need to do in order to make a sale. Achha, second, first thing is talk too much. And uh, second, let me also cover. One more thing is the first salesperson also projected his values onto somebody who was clearly an affluent buyer. Does everybody get this or should I explain what this means? I'll explain what this means. If the customer if the salesperson is currently driving a very inexpensive car or maybe, you know, uh, doesn't have a car or whatever, or he, he has a different kind of value system. And he thinks that typically when the salesperson goes into a showroom as a customer, if he typically wants a test drive, if he wants to know the features, if he wants to get a discount, he assumes that an affluent buyer, a rich buyer also wants the same. No. Their thinking is quite different just because you typically want to test drive when you drive a car, when you want to buy a car, just because you typically want to know the features, just because you want a huge discount does not necessarily mean that the rich buyer wants a huge discount. He does not mean he wants to know the features. He probably already knows it. In fact, if you tell a rich guy, very rich guy that you are offering an, a discount, then sometimes, sometimes they actually get offended. I'm not talking about B2B, I'm talking about in a B2C setting because they want to actually show off how expensive the car is. <laughs> right. And says, secondly, if they want, if he wanted a discount, he would have asked for it. But when he's not asking for a discount, then why are you offering a discount? Right. Do you think this is a mistake a lot of people make? Offering, yes, a, discount, right. offering a discount when it's not even asked for. That almost becomes a sales closing strategy. When the person has not even asked for a discount, why are you asking for a, uh, why are you offering a discount? And you're clearly thinking that just because I think in a certain pattern that this is how I would buy a car. That does not mean that this is how a rich person would want to buy an expensive car. Their thinking is quite often very different. So the first salesperson projected his thinking onto the second person. This is another mistake that we should not make. 
whatever the way it's not necessary that the way we think about how how we will buy a product is necessarily the way the customer will buy the product especially when we are when we are approaching premium customers because, because this is a premium offering right and tab is a premium offering right right do you agree right sir right sir completely agree right, right. So does not necessarily mean that the customer also want the same things first reason is the sales person talk too much and did not listen to the customer's want second is the he projected his values onto clearly an affluent buyer okay so second sales person also realized that minimizing friction was crucial to getting the deal done so yes you have to upsell you're right the people who said to get an opportunity to upsell they are right but it has to be done in a very uh, like a gentle way a more uh, a kind of a, a a way in which a rapport is built so he got the first thing to do the first thing he did was he appealed to the customer's want the customer's immediate want was to start the paperwork and to buy the car he started the process but just before he was about to sign he did some small talk to build rapport he understood that the person wanted something even costlier and could afford something even costlier and then he sold a costlier product and sold it but he did not try to sell it right from the start first he fulfilled what the customer wanted which was paperwork he will start the paperwork to buy the car so my point is this if you are not selling better perhaps you are talking too much and listening too little reverse it if you are not selling better perhaps you are talking too much and listening too little reverse it reverse it first step stop talking start listening stop talking start listening most of us most of us are terrible listeners do you agree most of us are terrible listeners generally do you agree most of us in general are terrible listeners yes yes in general in general the wife says you never listen to me you only hear what you want to hear the husband says sure i want to hear the wife says you never listen to me you only hear what you want to hear the husband says sure i'll have a beer because that is what he wants to listen to this is why problems happen in marriage marriage also 